So last time we talked, Autumn Kialoha, the heir of my legacy challenge, introduced tummy time to her infant son, Sage Kialoha, while her sister, Nicole Volkov, spent time with her fiancé, Caleb Vitor, and decided that she was going to create the cure for werewolfism and become a human. In Mount Komurebi, Alexis and Christopher were heading to San Michuno for dinner. She may be old, have grey hair, and an aching back, but she didn't care. Our founder Alexis knew she still had it going on and was gonna dress the way she wanted no matter what. She wouldn't let Simsiety tell her that she's too old to show off her goodies. And you know Chris was loving her in that dress too. Ezra, why are you here? Please let your parents enjoy their vacation. And Mason is here. You'll have nowhere else to go. The restaurant Alexis and Chris were dining at was in the same lot. They first met and physically fought one another, ultimately leading to them falling in love. Oh, memories. And my, how it's changed. Looking back on that day, now so long ago, Alexis couldn't believe how much her and Chris had accomplished in all these years together. And though he may be immortal, she was happy to have grown old with him by her side. He loved her when she was young and perky, and still loves her just as much now if not more. Just like the lot they were currently sitting in, she had changed immensely, and Chris stuck by her through all of it. She was eternally grateful that she was blessed with the type of love every little girl dreams of having. The two ordered their meals, and Chris ordered a luxurious bottle of champagne to share. He was set on spoiling her as much as possible before the end hoping that the end wasn't near and that Alexis would choose immortality so that the two could be together forever. But as much as they were enjoying themselves and having fun, Christopher couldn't help but have a bad feeling. A really bad feeling. They conversed and flirted as they drank the champagne. And that's when Chris had an idea. Their family had never taken a vacation before all at once. And now since Edward and Ezra are moved out, he really missed them and wanted to see them as well as the grandkids. Maybe after this vacation, they should take another one. Alexis was all in. She wanted to experience as much as she possibly could with her kids and grandkids. They, along with Chris, were the only things that mattered now. The restaurant was busy and the food was taking a while. So Alexis and Chris left their table for a bit to try out the bubble trim. But instead of trying it with bubbles, they tried it with oregano. Alexis had never had oregano before and rarely drinks. So this was new territory for her. She felt like a hypocrite for trying it after what her daughter Autumn went through. But she felt less hypocritical as she exhaled and the relaxed relaxing sensation hit her all over. Damn, this shit is dank. She was absolutely gone. Their food arrived right after they were done and were. It tastes so much better while being on oregano. Alexis was in heaven. This is what's fun about getting old. Who knows? Maybe she will give Coca-Cola a shot. They enjoyed their food before leaving to dance near the bar. And there's a couple casually getting wicked against the restaurant doors. I thought this was a classy place. Alexis and Chris Chris certainly can't judge, so they minded their business and danced. Alexis was breaking it down, not worried at all about breaking a hip. She gained an atrocious reputation for trying oregano. Why can't women have any fun without getting scrutinized? But did Alexis care? Of course not. At this point of her life, she gave no fucks. She was just happy to have been here for so long and be there in this very moment with Chris. They've lived such a long, wonderful life together. And just like all good things, they must eventually come to an end. Back in episode 62, while dining at Shea Lama with Chris, Alexis realized that when her time comes, she would be leaving her immortal husband behind. Since then, she'd been doing a lot of thinking. She knew what Chris wanted. He wanted her to pick immortality so that the two of them could be together forever. But immortality was not something Alexis ever wanted. She's loved her life, she has, but being immortal is not natural. She is a sim, she was born. She lived, and now, she has to die. That's the way it's supposed to be. Picking immortality, in Alexis's mind, would be wrong. Wrong because it messes with nature, but also because of the consequences. She would eventually have to watch her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, die. 
Jacob's and Candy's deaths were painful enough, let alone the children she brought into the world herself. She wouldn't be able to bear it, as sorry as she was to have to tell her husband this. Alexis would not be picking immortality. But this didn't mean she wanted Chris to go with her, in fact, Chris didn't have to do anything if he didn't want to. He could stay immortal and fall in love again. He could give it up and grow old himself. It was up to him. But her decision was made. She would be dying. Christopher figured that Alexis wouldn't pick immortality. He was devastated, but couldn't be mad at his fated mate. So even though he was inconsolable, he gave his wife a kiss. He knew he only had so many kisses left to give her. 